good afternoon and welcome to the first adult Bible study that I am posting. Um, I am coming to you from my home in Pegs, Oklahoma and we are going to talk about uh, For one, Psalms 46 will be our reading, which is, be still, 4610 says, be still and know that I am God. Alright, so the topic, uh, the title of this here lesson is Stop. My friend and I sat in the sand near the ever rhythmic ocean. As the sun sank in the distance, wave after wave curled, paused, and then rippled toward our extended toes, stopping just short each time. I love the ocean, she said, smiling. It moves so I don't have to. What a thought. So many of us struggle to stop. We do, 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 and go, 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 somehow afraid that if we cease our efforts, we will cease to be. Or that by stopping, we will expose ourselves to the ever-present realities we work to keep at bay. In Psalms 46, 8 through 9, God flexes his omnipotent muscles, putting his power on display. Come and see what the Lord has done. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. God is a busy God who works to create calm within the chaos in our days. And then in verse 10 we read, Be still and know that I am God. Of course, it is possible to know God while running here and there, but the psalmist's inv invitation to cease thriving calls us to a different kind of knowing, a knowing that we can stop and be still because God never stops, a knowing that it's God's power that gives us the ultimate value, protection, and peace. What do you need to stop doing right now in order to find rest? And how might you practice this? Are you overworking? Running around like a chicken with your head cut off? Not getting any sleep because you're working two, maybe three jobs not having a moment for yourself, a moment for God. There are so many people out there right now that don't even know how to sit down and relax because all they know is go, go, go. There's a saying out there that says, stop and smell the flowers means to pause, to just stop and breathe in, and that's what we need to do. We need to stop and breathe in the breath of God. Breathe in and reflect on God. Let's go ahead and read all of Psalms 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth may give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. Selah. Selah means 
stop and reflect or stop and pause. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, and kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, and the earth melts. Selah. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth, and he makes wars cease to end the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth, and breaks the bow, and shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. What does that say to you? Well, God is a tested is tested help in times of trouble. a note here in this Bible that says that Psalms 46, 47, 48, 49, 83, and 91 are all undated, but are associated with Jehoshaphat's victory over Moab, Ammon, and the Minu Minuites. Minuites. So, there's no known time frame for when that was written. But we need to stop. We need to think. We need to pray. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Every coin has two sides. The front is called heads, and from the early Roman times, usually depicts a country's head of state. The back is called tails, the term possibly originating from the British tin pence, depicting the rising tail of the heraldic lion. Like a coin, Christ's prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane possesses two sides. In the deepest hours of his life, on the night before he died on the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing to take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke 22:42. When Christ says, take this cup, that is raw honesty of prayer. He reveals his personal desire. This is what I want. Then Jesus turns the coin, praying, not my will. That's the side of abandon. Abandoning ourselves to God begins when we simply say, but what do you want, God? This two-sided prayer is also included in Matthew 26 and Mark 14, and is mentioned in John 18. Jesus prayed both sides of the prayer, take this cup, what I want and not my will, what you want, pivoting between them. Two sides of Jesus, two sides of prayer. What might we learn if we prayed honestly with complete abandon as Jesus did? What situation are you facing right now where you can pray honestly yet with abandon to God? Let's say a quick prayer before we close. Father, help me follow your, the example of your son who sent 
who spent everything so that I might possess real life that includes experiencing intimate prayer with you. Lord, I thank you for everything that you do in my life, all the blessings that you provide for me. I don't deserve them, but I thank you for them anyway. I want to ask this, you touch each one that watches this video, Lord. Touch their heart. Bring them closer to you, Lord. Maybe I can reach out to a lost soul in some way, some form, some fashion. Lord, thank you for another beautiful day. And thank you for blessing me with a wonderful church family and a wonderful Carlos family and a wonderful Anderson family and all the other relative names that are surrounding me. I ask you to lay your hand upon each one and bless them abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. All right. So, that's all I have for you for this session. I know it's kind of short. Um, but hopefully over time, it'll build. And we can get some followers. I do ask that you share the videos and let others hear the Word of God as well. Maybe somehow, some way, we can touch some lost souls together. My name is Athena. I am coming to you from Pegs, Oklahoma. This is Athena's Bible Study. And I thank you for watching. See you next time.